The Necroz archetype was introduced into the TCG on January 15th, 2015 with the introduction of the core set Secrets of Eternity, and having its most recent support releasing earlier this year from the set Ghosts from the Past. Necros is a ritual-based archetype with a main focus surrounding controlling your opponent's established boards with a heavy emphasis on destroying, bouncing, negating, and modulating the stats of your opponent's extra deck monsters. And while the initial release of the archetype left much to be desired, the following waves of support would push the strategy into tier 0 status, cementing itself as one of the top decks of its format and leaving behind both a legacy and fan base that are still strong to this day. In this episode of The History Of, I will be taking you through the various releases of the Necroz archetype, starting from its earliest releases all the way up to the most recent wave of support. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and if you have an archetype that you would like to see covered in a future episode, let me know down in the comments. This Necroz episode is actually viewer requested, and I would love to be able to continue making future episodes based on archetypes that are also viewer requested. And real quick before we get started, here is the obligatory reminder to please hit the subscribe button and leave a like. We just recently hit 200 subscribers and are slowly making our way up to that ever so elusive 1000 subscriber mark. So any and all help from you is highly appreciated and gives me motivation to bring you more content like this in the future. So with that out of the way, let's get into the history of the Necroz archetype. Starting off with the releases from Secrets of Eternity, we have Dance Princess of Necroz, a level 4 water spell caster effect monster with 1600 attack and 800 defense, was released as a rare and has the following effect. Your opponent cannot activate cards or effects in response to the activation of a Necroz Ritual spell card. Necroz Ritual monsters you control cannot be targeted by an opponent's card effects. If this card is tributed by a card effect, you can target one of your banished Necroz monsters, except Dance Princess of the Necroz, add it to your hand. You can only use this effect of Dance Princess of Necroz once per turn. While the protection and cycling effect of Dance Princess are nice within the archetype, these days she rarely sees play due to not having enough space to run in any capacity, seeing as Necroz is regularly paired with other archetypes such as Drytron and Dogmatica. Next up from Secrets of Eternity, we have the very first Ritual monster released, that monster being Necroz of Gungnir, a level 7 water spellcaster ritual effect monster with 2500 attack and 1700 defense, was released as a secret rare as well as an ultimate rare and has the following effect. You can ritual summon this card with any Necroz ritual spell, must be ritual summoned without using any level 7 monsters. You can only use each of the following effects of Necroz of Gungnir once per turn. Quick effect, you can discard this card, then target one Necros monster you control. It cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects this turn. Quick effect, you can discard one Necros card and target one card on the field, destroy it. Necros of Gungnir was regularly run at one copy or early in its life, but now is not seen very often in modern Necros decks or anywhere else. The final card that was released from Secrets of Eternity came in the form of a ritual spell card called Necros Cycle and has the following effect. This card can be used to ritual summon any Necroz ritual monster. Tribute monsters from your hand or field, then ritual summon one Necroz ritual monster from your hand or graveyard whose levels equal exactly the total levels of those monsters. You can only use this effect of Necroz cycle once per turn. If you control no monsters, you can banish this card and one Necroz monster from your graveyard, add one Necroz spell from your deck to your hand. For the most part, you would never play any less than two copies of any Necroz ritual spell, but the secondary effect of Necroz cycle making it be able to <laughs> cycle through your ritual spell cards is very useful. That wraps up the initial Necros releases from Secrets of Eternity, but like I mentioned previously, once the next wave of Necros cards were released, the Necros archetype would shoot into the meta, becoming one of the top decks of its format. The set that would make Necros a tier 0 threat would be the Secret Forces, releasing only a short month later on February 13th, 2015, and we'll get into those cards right now. We'll start things out with Shurit, Strategist of the Necroz, a level 3 water warrior effect monster with 300 attack and 1800 defense, was released as a super rare and has the following effect. If you ritual summon exactly one Necroz ritual monster with a card effect that requires use of monsters, this card can be used as the entire requirement. If this card is tributed by a card effect, you can add one warrior Necroz ritual monster from your deck to your hand. You can only use this effect of Shurit Strategist of Necroz once per turn. Shurit is a very important part of any Necroz build, being able to be used as the entire requirement for a summon of a Necroz ritual monster is amazing. Being able to save you resources as well as being able to search Necroz monsters if it's tributed. Definitely a must run at two or three copies. Next up we have Great Sorcerer of the Necroz, a level 4 water spellcaster effect monster with 1500 attack and 800 defense, was released as a super rare and has the effect where 
If this card is tributed by a card effect, you can add one spellcaster type Necroz ritual monster from your deck to your hand. If this card is banished, you can send one Necroz monster from your deck to the graveyard, except Great Sorcerer of the Necroz. You can only use one Great Sorcerer of the Necroz effect per turn and only once that turn. For the most part, unless you're playing a very specific build of Necroz, you won't be including Great Sorcerer as deck space is needed for other cards. Next up, we have Exa, Enforcer of the Necroz, a level 5 Water Dragon effect monster with 2,000 attack and 1,000 defense, was released as a super rare within the set and has the following effect. If this card is tributed by a card effect, you can add one Dragon-type Necroz ritual monster from your deck to your hand. If this card is banished, you can target one of your banished Necroz monsters except this card, special summon that monster. You can only use one Exa Enforcer of the Necroz effect per turn and only once that turn. For the most part, Necroz lists only included one copy of Exa, and it is a card that you don't want to see in your opening hand. It has good effects for late grindy games being able to search and summon banished Necroz monsters, but like like I said, it is only ever run at one copy, if at all. That wraps up the effect monsters released from the Secret Forces. We'll now get into the bread and butter, which is, of course, the ritual monsters, and we'll start things off with Necroz of Colossalus, a level 3 warrior water ritual monster with 1200 attack and 2300 defense, was released as a secret rare within the set and has the following effect. You can Ritual Summon this card with any Necroz Ritual spell, must be Ritual Summon. You can only use each of the following Necroz of Colossalus effects once per turn. You can discard this card, add one Necroz spell or trap from your deck to your hand. Quick effect, you can target one face-up monster on the field that was Special Summoned from the extra deck. Until the end of this turn, that target's attack becomes zero, also that target's effects are negated. Running multiple copies of Colossalus was pretty standard, as the effect is very useful being able to allow you to search out all of your Necroz spell or trap cards, even though ironically, Necroz has no in-archetype trap cards, even to this day. The next ritual monster that we are going to be talking about is Necroz of Brionic, a level 6 water warrior ritual monster with 2300 attack and 1400 defense, and was released as a secret rare within the set. Necroz of Brionic has the effect that says, you can ritual summon this card with any Necroz ritual spell, must be ritual summoned without using Necroz of Brionic. You can only use each of the following effect of Necroz of Brionic once per turn. You can discard this card, add one Necroz monster from your deck to your hand, except Necroz of Brionic. You can target up to two face-up monsters on the field that were special summoned from the extra deck, shuffle them into the deck. This along with the next card that we'll talk about are arguably the most iconic monsters within the archetype and for good reason. Necroz of Brionic is an amazing addition to the Necroz deck, being able to search any Necroz monster from your deck, as well as being able to bounce up to two of your opponent's extra deck monsters to the extra deck. Definitely an amazing card and was, and still is, run at one or two copies. Following up Necroz of Brionic, we have Necroz of Trishula, a level 9 water warrior ritual monster with 2700 attack and 2000 defense, was released as a secret rare within the set and has the following effect. You can ritual summon this card with any Necroz ritual spell, must be ritual summoned without using any level 9 monsters. You can only use each of these effects of Necroz of Trishula once per turn. When this card is ritual summoned, you can banish exactly three of your opponent's cards, one from each of their hand, field, and graveyard. The card in the hand is chosen at random. Like I said with Brionic, Necroz of Trishula is probably again one of the most iconic Necroz monsters, having a quick play negation effect as well as sharing the same devastating effect as Trishula, Dragon of the Ice Barrier, banishing cards from your opponent's field, hand, and graveyard, the only difference being that there must be cards to banish from each of those locations or the effect will not be able to resolve. With that being said, Necroz of Trishula was an amazing addition and was definitely played in a majority of Necroz decks. Next up, we have Necroz of Unicor, a level 4 water spellcaster ritual monster with 2300 attack and 1000 defense, was released as a secret rare and whose effect reads, you can ritual summon this card with any Necroz ritual spell, must be ritual summoned, you can discard this card, then target one Necroz card in your graveyard except Necroz of Unicor, add it to your hand. You can only use this effect of Necroz of Unicor once per turn. Negate the effects of face-up monsters on the field that were special summoned from the extra deck. Necroz of Unicor, like a lot of other Necroz ritual monsters, allow you to add other Necroz cards to your hand. The difference with Unicor is that it adds them from the graveyard, but does not have the restriction of what type of Necroz card that can be added. The other effect of negating extra deck monster effects is also useful when used in the correct applications. 
Necroz of Valkyrius is the next card we're going to be talking about. Valkyrius is a level 8 water spellcaster ritual monster with 2900 attack and 1700 defense, was released as a secret rare, and has the following effect that reads, you can ritual summon this card with any Necroz ritual spell. Must be ritual summoned without using any level 8 monsters. You can only use each effect of Necroz of Valkyrus once per turn. When an opponent's monster declares an attack, you can banish one Necroz card from your graveyard and discard this card, negate the attack, then end the battle phase. During your main phase, you can tribute up to two monsters from your hand and or field, and if you do, draw the same number of cards you tributed. Once again, just like the other Necroz monsters, Valkyrus is amazing at being able to cycle through your deck specifically specifically being able to tribute monsters from your hand or field, then allowing you to draw cards up to the number of cards you tributed. Also, as a byproduct of that, allowing you to proc the effects of monsters that have effects that trigger when they are tributed. Definitely a good card to include in any Necroz deck. With the second to last ritual monster released from the Secret Forces, we have Necroz of Cataster, a level 5 water dragon ritual monster with 2200 attack and 1200 defense, released as a secret rare and whose effect reads, you can ritual summon this card with any Necroz ritual spell card, must be ritual summoned without using Necroz of Cataster, and cannot be special summoned by other ways. You can discard this card, then target one Necroz monster in your graveyard, special summon it. You can only use this effect of Necroz of Cataster once per turn. At the start of the damage step, if a Necroz monster you control battles an opponent's face-up monster that was special summoned from the extra deck, destroy that monster. Necroz of Cataster has a couple interesting effects, allowing you to summon monsters from your graveyard as well as destroying extra deck monsters that it battles with. Some builds of Necroz run a copy of Cataster, but those lists are few and far between. To round out the ritual monsters released from this set, we have Necroz of Decisive Armor, a level 10 water dragon ritual monster that boasts an impressive 3300 attack and 2300 defense, was also released as a secret rare and has the effect where, you can ritual summon this card with any Necroz ritual spell card, must be ritual summoned without using any level 10 monsters and cannot be special summoned by other ways. You can only use each of these effects of Necroz of Decisive Armor once per turn. During either player's turn, you can discard this card, then target one Necroz monster you control. It gains 1,000 attack and defense until the end of the turn. You can target one set card your opponent controls, destroy it, and if you do, banish it. Necroz of Decisive Armor is in the same boat as Cataster. It has interesting effects but wasn't used in many Necroz builds. Its effects and base stats allow you to have insane attack stats as well as the effect allowing you to destroy your opponent's set cards, but like I said, wasn't really played a whole hell of a lot. But it is still a pretty cool card in my opinion, and I would love to see the card be used in more builds if it does somehow become more viable in the future. We'll move on to the last couple cards released from the Secret Forces that are all spell cards. The first one that we'll cover is going to be a ritual spell card called Necroz Mirror and reads as follows. This card can be used to ritual summon any Necroz ritual monster, tribute monsters from your hand or field, and or banish Necroz monsters from your graveyard, then ritual summon one Necroz ritual monster from your hand whose levels exactly equal the total levels of the monster. You can only use this effect of Necroz Mirror once per turn. If you control no monsters, you can banish this card and add one Necroz monster from your graveyard, add one Necroz spell from your deck to your hand. Like I was saying with the first ritual spell, you would run multiple copies of each because they all allow you to search and cycle different types of Necroz cards from your deck and graveyard, which helps a lot going into late grind games. And that'll lead us to the last of the cards released from this set, which is another ritual spell card known as Necroz Kaleidoscope. This card reads as, This card can be used to ritual summon any number of Necroz ritual monsters, tribute one monster from your hand or field, or send one monster from your extra deck to the graveyard. Also, after that, ritual summon any number of Necroz monsters whose total levels equal exactly the level of that monster. You can only use this effect of Necroz Kaleidoscope once per turn. If you control no monsters, you can banish this card and one Necroz monster from your graveyard, add one Necroz spell from your deck to your hand. This would be the last of the ritual spells and once again would be run in multiple copies because of the effect being able to recur and search other Necroz cards with the secondary effects of all of the ritual spell cards. The next set that would contain Necroz support would come only three months later in the form of Crossed Souls, introduced on May 15th, 2015, and would give three new support cards to the Necroz archetype, two of the three being Pendulum Monsters and the other one being a Ritual Monster. The two Pendulum Monsters were never included in Necroz decks, so there isn't a whole lot to say about them, but I will do a quick recap of both so we can move on to the rest of the direct support. 
The first of the two Pendulum monsters would end up being Zephyr Saber, Swordmaster of the Necroz. A level 4 water spellcaster monster with 1500 attack and 800 defense was released as a comment in whose monster and pendulum effects read, You cannot pendulum summon monsters except Necroz and Zephyr monsters. This effect cannot be negated. You can tribute this card from your hand or face up side of the field, tribute monsters from your hand or field, then ritual summon one Necroz ritual monster from your hand whose level equals the total levels of those monsters. You can only use this effect of Zephyr Saber Swordmaster of the Necroz once per turn. The other pendulum monster released from the set was Zephraxa, Flame Beast of the Necroz, a fire dragon pendulum monster with 2000 attack and 1000 defense that was released as a common and whose monster and pendulum effects reads, you cannot pendulum summon monsters except Necroz and Zephyr monsters. This effect cannot be negated. While this card is in your hand or graveyard, if you control a face-up Necroz or Zephra cards, except Zephraxa Flame Beast of Necroz is destroyed by battle or card effects while in your monster or pendulum zone, you can special summon this card. You can only use this effect of Zephraxa Flame Beast of Necroz once per turn. The third and final piece of Necroz support that came out of Cross Souls would be Necroz of Sophia, a water spellcaster ritual monster that boasts the highest attack and defense stat of any Necroz ritual monster, sitting at an impressive 3600 and 3400 respectively. Sophia was released as a secret rare within the set and has the following effect. You can ritual summon this card with any Necroz ritual spell card. Must be ritual summoned from your hand by using three monsters you control with different types and cannot be special summoned by other ways. During either player's main phase one, you can discard this card and one Necroz spell card. Your opponent cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck during this phase. When this card is ritual summoned, you can banish all other cards on the field and in the graveyards. You cannot normal summon set or special summon other monsters the turn you activate this effect. Unfortunately, Necros of Sophia would not become a mainstay for deck lists after the card was released. The resources needed to summon and the effect were too much and the effect was not worth the resource cost. That wraps up the releases from Cross Souls and Necros players would need to wait two years for new support but would finally come in the core set Maximum Crisis releasing in the TCG on May 5th, 2017. Maximum Crisis would bring with it a single card for the Necros archetype and would end up being a water psychic effect monster in the form of Ariel Priestess of the Necros. Ariel has 1000 attack and defense, was released as a rare, and has the effect that reads, Once per turn you can reveal any number of Necros cards in your hand, increase or reduce this card's level by the number of revealed cards until the end of the turn. If this card is tributed by a card effect, you can add one Necros monster from your deck to your hand, except a ritual monster. You can only use the effect of Ariel Priestess of the Necros once per turn. Ariel, unfortunately, just like the more recent support, wasn't used in lists. The level modulation was just a little too gimmicky to be able to run and maintain the consistency that Necroz is known for. Following Maximum Crisis, it would be a long four-year wait before a set would give us the very last piece of Necroz support that would arrive in the TCG. This set would end up being Ghost from the Past, releasing on April 16th, 2021. This very last piece of Necroz support would be Necroz of Ar Ariad Bear? Ar Ariad Bear. Ar a level 10 water warrior ritual monster that also boasts an impressive attack and defense stat with 3300 and 2300 respectively, was released as an ultra rare within the set and whose effect reads as follows. You can ritual summon this card with any Necroz ritual spell. Must be ritual summoned without using any level 10 monsters. You can only use each of the effects of Necroz of Ar <laughs> Bear <laughs> once per turn. You can discard this card, tribute up to two Necroz monsters from your hand and or field, and if you do, send that many Necroz cards from your deck to the graveyard. When a monster effect is activated, quick effect, you can tribute one monster from your hand or field, negate the activation and if you do, banish that card. Necros of Care Bear, <laughs> being the most recent card released for the Necros archetype, is being run at one, if at all, and is more or less being used for the second effect as a hand trap-like effect, negating and banishing monsters that activate their effects. All right, that wraps up all of the current TCG releases for the Necroz archetype. Thank you all for hanging out for a while and watching. Like I said earlier, this Necroz archetype is viewer requested, and I really enjoyed researching and making a video about an archetype that I was previously not really familiar with. If you would like to see any specific archetypes in a future video, let me know down in the comments. I would love to be able to bring you content that you would like to see. Last reminder to hit the subscribe button. Thank you all for the support. I'll see you with new content soon. Have a great day, you guys.